you are tuning into the Goldilocks Productions presentation of the Spiritual Insight Show with Reverend Tiffany White Sage Woman. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spiritual Insight Show. I do realize that uh, the counter went down a, two minutes early, so <laughs> here I am, I guess, better early. And then been late, right? So uh, <laughs> anyone, anyway, welcome everyone to the Spiritual Insight Show. I'm Reverend Tiffany White, Sage Woman. And this is a beautiful, well, it was here in Southeastern Connecticut, a beautiful Sunday, June 23rd. My goodness, it's just going by so fast this year. It's halfway over um, 2019. Woo! It's been a, a wild ride. <laughs> I'm sure many of us can agree with that. Again, any welcome everyone to the Spiritual Insight Show. And thank you for tuning in and sitting in Sacred Circle with not just myself, but each and every one of us that sit in this Sacred Circle. Um, we are giving and receiving healing, love, whatever is needed. This is a safe place. And please know that um, your comments are definitely welcome. Um, this is a very interactive show. We have those that that view and participate, um, put their thoughts, and they're very well. They very are much welcome. Their thoughts, their experiences, please put those. They're welcomed in the comments. And then any questions that you may have pertaining to the topic. All right. So um, hello, Sarah. Anthony and Austin, hello, the three of you, and make sure you give, uh, in case Austin's watching, hi, your godmother loves you, <laughs> aw, <laughs> all right, <laughs> that's so sweet, I love that, all right, so we'll give everybody a chance to come in, because I'd like I said, I do realize I went live a little earlier than usual but welcome everyone and uh make sure that you um grab some paper a pad of paper and a pen and take some notes tonight because there's going to be a lot of information this evening uh, good evening chris happy sunday there's going to be a lot of information and note taking if you you know you would like to jot some things down all right Hello, Maureen. How are you, dear? I love you, too. Absolutely. Letting everyone show up in the sacred circle. Oh, yes. So beautiful. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As everyone is like, you can feel the energies coming in, and it's just so beautiful. But again, okay, so grab some crystals. Um, for those that like to do that, just grab some crystals because we're going to do a little short opening, a short, a short um, balancing of the energies within our circle before we start. And uh, like I said, just grab a piece of or a pad of paper, notebook, whatever, something to write with. And we're going to go over some materials that you may want to just jot down and note. And know that if there's any questions that you have, beyond this, that you can, beyond this live show, you can always um, message me um, through Facebook, Facebook Messenger, or you can message me through my website, which is whitesagewoman.com. And for those live radio listeners, I'm saying Sage, S-A-G-E, White Sage Women, Woman, Woman. <laughs> Oh, I say woman. <laughs> so you can message me through my website as well if you have any further questions after this show. All right. So, uh, oh, Sarah, you said you love me. That's beautiful. I love it. So cute. Of course I do. All right. Oh, look, Teresa's in the house. Hello, Teresa. Blessings. Yes, yes. All right. And Wendy. Hello, Wendy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So the topic this evening that after we get through, I want to make sure everyone's coming in in the sacred circle. And we're going to open with just a brief 
We're going to send some healing, love, and light through the circle. Then we're going to talk about the topic tonight is do EMFs affect our health and wellness? And so we're going to go over some some really good information. So take, um, well, information that I learned and I'm sharing with you. (laughs) With you all. So if you need to take some notes, please be prepared for that. So right now what I would like to do is... We have everyone that's coming in and sitting in Sacred Circle taking their place. Energetically, and it doesn't matter whether you're watching this live or you're watching this on the replay. You're still going to feel the energy. You're still going to feel the healing. So hello, welcome, Mila. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. So it's it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so what we're going to do is we have a lot of healers, a lot of energy workers that are, that are in this sacred circle. And even if you don't consider yourself a healer or energy worker, you're a being of light. So know that and just open up your heart and just pour love. That's all you need to do is to shine your light, pour love. And we're going to be giving and receiving this this beautiful energetic flow that comes around with us, each and every one of us through this circle. So grab some crystals and all we're going to do, and it doesn't have to be very long, okay? It's very short. Healing can be short and fast. It's it's very simplistic and it should be fast. Um, and, And if it's, this is a whole nother conversation for another show, but usually... It's once the intention, and yes, I want to receive healing. I want to give healing. Bam, the command is is made, okay? So this is what we're going to do, very much so. All right, I have a Rose Quartz Merkaba, Cosmic Heart Healing. My heart connecting with each and every one of your hearts. We are connecting to the cosmic, the divine cosmic heart. All right. The Divine Feminine Cosmic Heart. And as we are all together, we are connecting together heart to heart in this beautiful circle, or actually the energy is moving like a figure eight. The circle is a circle, then it twists to figure eight. And then now we're spinning up, up, going up a golden spiral staircase to the upper vibrations. We are connecting with the divine cosmic heart. We're going to take three deep breaths. I want you to breathe this divine love in. Breathe out that you are divine love. Breathe in the divine cosmic heart. Breathe out. You are part of this divine cosmic heart. I'm going to breathe in the divine cosmic heart energy really deep. Blow out. We are all one. We are one. Feel that go through your whole body, whether it starts at your head and works down to your feet or starts at your feet and goes up to your head. It doesn't matter because it does the same thing. It does. Then the figure eight goes up and down, up and down, up and down. So wherever you start, it doesn't matter. You're just joining in in that circuit. All right. And again, this is a very this is a safe place, a safe circle. We are protected and all those for our highest and greatest, our loved ones. All the angels, the angelic committee, intergalactic council. And here we are. Ah. All right, everyone. So kind of just shake your hands, wiggle your toes. Make sure you are right here, right now, back into your physical body. We take a little sip of water. Mm. Mm. It's beautiful. Felt electric, didn't it? Ah. (laughs) which is a great, great tie-in right into where we're going to talk about. Okay, so uh, last week, 
I sat in was like every day, seven, seven days of an EMF summit and acquired a lot of great information. And, oh, yes, you hear the puppies, Chris? Oh, yeah. Oh, they were drinking wine. They're not, they're not quiet at all. <laughs> Even though the bowl's in, in another room, it doesn't matter. You heard them. <laughs> So, all right, Ty and Gracie, Chris is hello. <laughs> all right, oh, good, Teresa. Yes, thank you, that was amazing. Yes, my whole body is vibrating, Sarah. Yes, yes. Okay, so, and we can get back to that anytime. Anytime you need to do that. It's up the golden spiral staircase, which is going up the golden spiral of our casual chakra, and then back down. Bringing it down, bringing that high vibration back down to right here where we are. It's beautiful. All right. All right. So let's get to the topic. Do EMFs affect our health and wellness? I'm sure every one of you right here, right now will say yes. <laughs> and for those who maybe aren't aware of what EMF is, EMF stands for electromagnetic field. And I've also heard it called electromotive force, electromotive force. But the term that's mostly used, especially in the summit too, was uh, electromagnetic field. It's interesting because wouldn't that be our aura too? Would you consider our aura to be electric? Uh, and are we not electrical? We are electrical. Our energy is electrical. And I heard some very interesting, uh, now I know things as far as in, in a lot of us energy healers, we um, are taught things from a different view of, of maybe science. I'm talking real science, okay? Um, not, um, yeah, I'm talking about the real scientists, maybe more like the quantum physics, you know, type of scientists, not... Not those who are experts in pharmaceutical. Yeah, no, stop. Um, uh, like quantum physics, they understand the electricity and how we really are electrical. Put aside the chemistry, all right, um, of these chemical compounds that we're made of, and made up of, and blah, 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 blah. Why do they shock our heart if it stops? Hmm, to restart the electrical impulses that go up and down our spine and in our nervous system. So we are electrical, all right? And so pretty much an electromagnetic, I'm going to share some of the notes here with you. So an electromagnetic field is a physical field produced by electrically charged objects. It affects the behavior of charged objects in the vicinity of the field. So the electromagnetic field extends indefinitely throughout space and describes the electromagnetic interaction. So everything is all connected. We know this. Then we are all electrically charged. And this is how we can feel something that, that goes on on the other side of the world. In, in another part in the universe, another place in the universe, we all feel Everything, we all feel it, don't we? Woo. All right, so we've got this new, we have heard hear a lot of things about technology and what's coming up for us. You know, it could be AIs. Um, and I'm not really concerned about that too much. There's some really great technology with artificial intelligence. I just don't like it to replace human beings. That's where, no. They shouldn't look like humans. The robots shouldn't try to mimic or pretend to be humans. That's where I have a hard spot with it. But if it helps us in other fields of technology, you know, that's fine. That is fine. You know, I don't mind that. Uh, and I hear that it does help like in so many different um, other fields, archaeology and things like that. And, and with computers, that's great. But and what's interesting is that the Intergalactic Council had 
made a comment that, you know, everyone's scanned. Like as we're ascending, we're we are ascending into these upper vibrations and these upper dimensions. Uh, that when they when when we are able to and we do in our sleep, I don't know of how many people are conscious of the meetings that we attend and, and these um uh, meetings, conferences that we attend on on in diff on different stargates with intergalactic council, and we get updates. Pretty interesting. And you may think, not me. I don't remember that. Yes, each and every one of you, because that's what keeps you motivated to stay on your mission. That's part of your drive, because you know, you know the importance of staying focused on this ascension. All right. And so they had assured that. No artificial being is ever allowed in these intergalactic uh, conventions or meetings or anything like that, that you're, everybody is scanned. It's no different than, than being scanned by, and they're by crystals. Uh, you know, it's not like, oh, security people, crystals. You go in through the, under this crystal archway or you go into this crystal doorway, this opening, and it's, you have to walk through. It's almost like a metal detector, but it's crystal. It's crystalline and you walk through it and it reads your intention and it does scan your body. It scans you, scans you and know what form you are, what physical form, where you come from, what planet and things like that. So if it, and it will pick up AI and will not allow them in. So don't worry about when people, oh my goodness, the world's going to be taken over by AIs. Yeah, that's the 3D world. They can have that. Bye. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> Chris makes me think about touching metal and getting a shock. Shocking. Um, I, I will tell you something. I've received electric shock. And I never, I had a lot, a lot of problems and a lot of, um, in, in growing up or really I had a lot of issues that started to develop in my 20s and just progressed into my 30s. All right. And when I was 14, I received electric shock. And it was for good. It felt like forever, but fast at the same time. Uh, and it was my family liked to go camping a lot. We had a trailer in the backyard. Uh, this was old electrical wiring in the garage. There wasn't grounded outlets or anything the trailer was was plugged into the garage and that was my getaway i loved to hang out because we had a house full of people and that was my it was better than going into my room and shutting the door i could go i'm gonna go sleep in the camper i'm gonna go spend some time in the camper and go hang out especially when it stormed because I loved hearing the rain on the metal roof it was like, Oh, so relaxing. And when it got me there or being on a car ride too. And you hear the rain coming down. It's just, it was so very meditative and relaxing for me. And so it was raining and, and uh, I would always go barefooted <laughs> and I, and I ran to the house to get something and I came back barefooted on the wet ground and I grabbed the camper ha the handle to get back into the camper and I couldn't let go and it started you know the whole now I'm screaming at this point and unfortunately I grew up a tomboy and I was always very loud <laughs> And my family admitted they thought I was yelling at somebody outside. So they, they weren't alarmed at first. But then they were like, okay, this she's just going on and on. She won't be quiet. Let's go check out and see what's going on. And, uh, and so it was when my half-sisters came out. And she's staring. I'm like, unplug. Now, this was really strange. This is how I know that an angel stepped in. Because you can't talk. You can't do anything. It's like, uh, you know, you can't. And I felt like this beautiful light being came in, pushed me aside and, but used my voice box to give commands of unplug the trailer specifically to my half sister, you know, go do this barking out commands of instructions to her. I, you know, I wouldn't know what to say. 
And so my half sister, my sister followed the instructions and unplugged it. And then it stopped. And I'm like, whoa, you know, I'm trying to catch my breath because you really felt like you got punched hard in the gut. That's how I felt like. And it was like, I couldn't stand up straight. It was like I was doubled over at first and trying to catch my breath and just kind of review what the heck happened, you know? And, um, and so it's interesting is the neighbor across the street, uh, was a trained firefighter and he knew one, my big mouth growing up and yelling at you in the neighborhood, but he knew it was a distress call. He knew that that was a different type of yell and he runs over and he's like, are you okay? Now in, in those days, uh, well, at least my parents didn't, and, and they knew I didn't like hospitals and doctors. They didn't rush you off to the hospital to get you checked or anything like that. And not that I would have agreed, but it went, it was like, walk it off. I'm fine. I'm walking it off. I'm all right. I'm okay. Cause he even suggested, well, maybe we should go get you checked out. And I was like, yeah, yeah, right. My, my mom knew she just absolutely was not going to take me to a doctor or especially a hospital. Um, I would find them hard with it, very, very much so. Uh, when I was young, I made it miserable so that they didn't want to take me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know that's bad, right? Now, a year later, here I am, I'm 15, um, and it was with the church youth group of, of all places. And, and, you know, you get teenagers together, we do stupid stuff. And so we were playing chicken. I was on somebody's shoulders, and we were we were inside playing this. And um, a lot of us fell, you know, bump into each other and you fall. Well, when I fell, I hit the, I hit a brick um, fireplace. Back of my head. Bam! I had a major concussion. I was, all I remember was after that happened, a couple minutes set in and I felt like I was in a dream. Everything just really dreamy with kind of like a little foggy and, and it's like slow motion. I mean, and it was really, really weird. All I wanted to do was lay down and go to sleep. And so, cause I remember walking around in the hallway and I was looking, you know, and, and the youth counselor was like, is everything okay? And I'm like, I just want to go lay down. And, and so they ended up calling my parents and, come get me now. I don't know if they took me to the hospital to get checked out. I was never told that <laughs> they kept a lot of that from me because I woke up days later in my bed and I was in bed for a week, at least seven days. And that was really, um, wow. That, that was the only time that I was down and out for a length of time like that. And so a year apart, I never put connect the dots that I had received electric shock and I had a major concussion. And so some rewiring probably happened to my brain, to my nervous system, to everything else. And then I get into my 20s and my diet was not the best. I'm going to be honest. My diet was not good. All right. And I started to start to have migraines and then seizures type of migraines. Uh, that progressed from the 20s to my 30s. And then I got onto this, nothing was helping. So I started to go into the holistic and some other avenues. Okay. So absolutely, I always thought that electrically, I, I somehow was rewired. Now, I don't know if that was good or not, but it happened. All right. So Think about that. And uh, some of the the presenters in the e EMF summit said that if someone was struck by lightning and they live, that that the, the testing that was done on them was that they they were rewired. And um, of course, that that amount of electricity surging through your body does some type of um when I say rewiring, it changes the path of how the electricity flows. So it's very interesting and it helps you go, hmm, wow, even more things. So that's what happens inside your body. Um, so now we've got this 5G coming up. 
uh, well, okay, 5G that's coming for everyone. The 5G spectrum is already in place. You know, the government and emergency personnel already use 5G. They use that spectrum. All right, so when they open it up to the public, it's not, it hasn't been tested. It hasn't been safely tested. All right? We need to pay attention to this and to these regulations and, and, the, and the damage that can occur from this um, to ourselves and not know what's going on. Go to the doctor who's not going to know what's going on either. And you know what happens with that cycle. Well, here, just, just take a medication, take a pill and go away. Everything will be fine later. No, it won't. Okay? It's not addressing the problem. So uh, we've been lied to about the whole 5G technology. Uh, in, is it on purpose? Oh, we're not going to go into that. It's a matter of opinion. But, you know, hey, would big corporations lie to us? <gasps> wow, of course they would. And we know they would. <laughs> anyway, uh, to push their business out? Absolutely. What you think about the Tabasco industry? It's Tabasco. <laughs> Tabasco, the tobacco industry. Do you know there was ads, I do believe in the 50s, that stated that smoking a pack of cigarettes is healthy for you. And it was endorsed by the Surgeon General of that time. Um, they fooled everyone that, that, yes, smoking cigarettes is good for you. You should do that. It makes you healthier. Wow. Okay, well, we learned that, didn't we? No, that's not. Um, asbestos, asbestos was was safe. We can think about so many things. I remember lead paint. My brother, remember the, all the toys? The little wooden toys were, were painted with lead paint. You get lead paint poisoning. All right, let's be in denial at first, but then when mass amounts come forward, they can't ignore it, push it aside, Sleep it aside anymore and go, oh, no, we got to handle this now. We got to clean this up. Um, do you know that a lot of these big companies has money put aside for lawsuits? Really? What does that tell you? <laughs> anyway, so all of this, there's been so many different, we can think about different products that when pushed as being healthy and then find out that's not. Uh, one presenter of the EMF summit called it, like this, it's the dam of denial. You bid this dam, right? Of denial. Oh no, it's everything's fine, but then the dam breaks and phew, here it comes. The truth comes flooding in, right? Um, so it, it's very, very interesting. Let me read a couple of my other notes here. Um, so, and as far as like the EMFs, um, smart meters. Do you have a smart meter for electricity? All right. On your home. Now, because the, the smart meters are different between water and gas and power. All right. For the, electri uh, the electrical. And so the one that needs, uh, they, they do have a shield, a smart meter shield if you Google it. You can buy them now. It's a steel cage. You just slip it right over your electric smart meter because they don't work with water and gas. Okay. So kind of know <laughs> what you've got there. And um, if you have a smart meter. Now, if you don't, that's great because uh, that technology is implemented in January of 2009. And if your power company, if meter readers still come to your house, you don't have a smart meter. And uh, you can actually to Google what's the difference between or how can you tell you have a smart meter? And uh, basically, if you don't have the dial that spins and there's just like some numbers uh, that, like digital, then, then that's pretty much OK. I've got a smart meter and I need some protection because it protects not just shields from the radiation, not only from um, the outside, from the meter, but it protects the behind that wall too, behind the meter. Some people are so sensitive that they are um, sensitive to electricity. 
Um, I, I heard some case studies during the summit of people being so sensitive sitting in front of a TV that they have this, this, this allergy, you know, so to speak, the sensitivity. They, they can't have TVs, much less computers, much um, hold a cell phone for too long. They can't. Um, the man who put together the EMF summit the health summit, he, he had a severe reaction to a cell phone. He cannot use a cell phone at all anymore. Okay. Um, and he, uh, you know, he can, his wife has one, but he can't, he can't touch it. All right. So now we got to worry about the Wi-Fi. All right. So, oops, let me see. See here, we've got some comments coming in. I'm trying to keep up. Smart meters here, we're catching on fire in Canada. Oh, wow. Well, I'm glad they took them out, Chris. I guess that was a blessing in disguise, though, really. You know, when that happens, that's that's, that's good. <laughs> well, you know, yay. All right. So now we'll be to Wi-Fi. Now, they do have um, Wi-Fi cages. It's, again, surrounded in steel. It's a protection box. You can uh, EMF or, or if you just do a search for um, um, Wi-Fi EMF boxes, um, you'll see them. The big Amazon has all of this. I just want you to make sure, okay, just make sure that it is from a company that's in the United States, okay? Please know that it, it, it not from another big country where a lot of stuff's imported from, because those have been tested and they they leak out there. They're, they're not very efficient. So be careful, don't be fooled by these products that, oh, look, it's half price. Yeah, sure. Now, I wanna just go over with you, um, those of us who are sensitive, we can we we are an EMF meter. I got an EMF meter um, the other day or last week, or when I heard about this during the summer, and I, I went ahead and got one. And so it's uh, tests everything, shows you a little digital display. I don't know if you can see if that's going to show up. It tests um, electrical. I've got the little, I have to still read <laughs> as I'm learning about it. That, okay, this is mag for magnetic fields. This is why it says tri-field, because this one, tri-field um, model TF2, I got this off Amazon. Uh, and I'm not endorsing any products. I'm just sh telling you this is the EMF meter. But the tri-fields is magnetic fields for power lines, appliances, wiring in the walls, and motors. And then it has an electric mode for the fluorescent lights, which I hope nobody still has fluorescent lights, wall units, wiring, electrical switches. You know, dimmer switches run higher than a regular switch. Um, and then it has RF, the radio frequencies, my radio and microwave for the cell phones, the Wi-Fi routers, microwave onion, ovens, microwave ovens, and radio TV stations. So it's, um, we've, it's been eye opening. Some of the things that, that we knew were going to, um, be triggered, you know, um, it, yeah, we, we kind of figured about that, but I don't use a microwave oven at all. I've never, even as a child been able to be near one, uh, without it, it driving me crazy. I don't know. I can't explain it. So I, we've never had one. <laughs> Um, let's see. Okay. So cell phones. Yes, this is important. If I hold a cell phone to my ear, to my ears, my ears and head get hot and tingly. Yes, absolutely. I always speak on speaker phone. That's the best way is on speaker phone. Um, absolutely. Some of the things here, no Bluetooth, please. It's just as bad a Bluetooth walking around it's got it's got a talking signal to the phone no watches you know all those types of of tech oh look it isn't this cool hands free really but it's zapping you it really is zapping you 
I want to read some of the presenters in case um, you want to Google some of their names and some of their websites. Okay. I just got a couple of them. I sat in so many. I just, the ones that really stuck out. So Jack Cruz, K-R-U-S-E, Jack Cruz talked about what happens, um, you know, when you put your cell phone to your ear against your head. Brain camp. Oh, the brain seed, that, that word. I just want to be careful. So many, and, and he is amazing. He actually just believes that all disease comes from this, comes from EMF, because he has treated clients, his clientele. This isn't just a belief system. He treats clients this way. All right. Now, I know a lot of us, like in the energy healing, and we scan the bodies and we can associate, okay, this is just trigger point, this trigger point. Well, he can actually, okay. So it's this point, but it's coming from where in your, where are you being exposed to EMF wise? Amazing. Where, where, if you have a smart meter, that wall, you know, are you having issues and problems? There was a lady who's, um, they couldn't get comfortable in that room and they never understood why until they, they finally, oh my goodness, the EMF's a smart meter. They had a whole bunch of problems happen after the smart meter was put in. So once they started reducing their, the EMFs within the home, taking care of the Wi-Fi router box, putting a cover on their smart meter, um, their electric smart meter, the electric meter, and then taking some other precautions, they really did um, notice a difference in the energy was better. Um, Jonathan Landsman talked about metal feeling, metal fillings in the EMFs. Um, it's pretty much an antenna in your mouth <laughs> as these signals increase. Who remembers Lucille Ball way back saying she communicated with what aliens? <laughs> Or that she could communicate that it was like an antenna or a signal way back when. Remember that? Um, there's some truth to this. All right. Uh, uh, who's another? There was a, um, there is a veterinarian who is on Facebook. Her name is Marlene Siegel. S-I-E-G-E-L. How EMFs are killing the animals we love. She, um, her daughter, her daughter, um, and when they talked about horses and the horses that act out, especially like in competitions. So once you think about these arenas, if they have Wi-Fi going on and, and, and they're very sensitive and the animals are very sensitive. Oh my goodness. They're going to act out, Right. And it's with dogs, cats, any animal is going to be very, very sensitive to this. But I have to tell you that even though each presenter had something really good to say, you know what they always followed up with the bottom, the bottom line here was that we are pulling away from nature. And when you pull away from nature, you're unplugging from life and allowing dis-ease to come in. whether they worded it in different ways. Now, this was interesting too. This was, um, this is a really good place to get daily emails or some information. It's called emfacademy.com, emfacademy.com. I signed up for the newsletter. And so um, one of the things is when it comes to EMF, there's external protection like we were talking about. All right, how you can, the devices you can use. Dousing was the number one where you use a pendulum or dousing rods. Uh, there was a case study of a dowser who could go in and find the spots in your home and or just, you know, yeah, in your home, business, whatever. And she got so sick, huh? probably because she could locate these things, but energetically she didn't protect herself maybe and cleanse. I don't have all those details, but we know that, uh-huh. Um, and she got sick just from doing that type of work. 
Uh, I have heard people say that you have to just move. And when I go to energy clear, or I call it feng shui the home, you can, it's the same thing, scanning the energy. I've gone into, I've only recommended moving to one house out of many that I've gone in and have cleared, so to speak. And I find that the problems are when there's electricity and water, water under the house and electricity crossing, there's all sorts of problems that's going to happen. All right. And, um, and it also depends too where the ley lines are. So when you have this perfect storm that starts to happen, there are cures you can actually. Um, I did with with this with this home, and um, I was able to six out. This is being part of nature, or, or being connected with nature and communicating with nature. This is the only way how I could fix that, so to speak. Uh, otherwise, forget it. And in my human physical, you know, okay, sure, then we just got to move. Um, but that's not really fixing it, is it? It's not fixing this property. It's not fixing this for anyone else in the future. And so we had water that that ran for us. It was, uh, the, the electric part was fine. We just had so much water that ran right under the house, flooded our basement. Sure, um, a sump pump gave out. But... I was directed, all right, by another energy healer and also validated all this with my angels. Um, and my, and when I say angels, it's my angels and guides and my committee, my angelic committee and their shamans. And they direct, you know what? Have a conversation with the water and ask the water to move over several feet. And to this day, we can still see sometimes, depends on whether it rains a lot or you can see kind of like where the where this trail of water is because it's like a, a really fertile patch. <laughs> it did move over. And it, it's giving honor and gratitude every time for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and so. People can do the energy scans. They don't have to be in your home. I've done it distant wise. I've had mine checked too because you want to make sure, you know, hey, can you check mine and make sure? And absolutely. All right. So we have these external things. The internal things, guess what? A lot of us do this too, whether it is energy healing, it's the foods and the supplements and, and the water that we consume. All right, so we know that there are many foods that can technically help fight the excessive oxidation stress caused by, they call it electrosmog, electrosmog, right? So if you aim to eat, they say 90% of your diet in a form that's unprocessed, local if possible, organic if possible, real food, you've gone a long way already. And I, I even hear 80%, you know, 80 to 90 is actually very doable and very reasonable. Okay. We know that some, there's always scams. You don't know what, you know, you think something's organic. All that, all the companies got to do is buy that label and slap it on there. It's just a high, it costs a lot of money to get this put on, to get, you know, certified or however they want to do it. We, but they, they've been caught with um, some companies saying it's organic and it's not. So you had to use your intuition so much. So I got to the point to where it's like, uh, even if it's, if it's produce, it shouldn't be in a bag. It should be where you go like a farmer's market and pick it out. It's fresh. Like it came from, from a garden. Um, and we're lucky some of the grocery stores around here do um get right from the farmers too so the produce you know it's, oh there i'm just gonna go pick it up um uh, you know i know it's convenient to buy salad mixes in a bag already you know hey look it's already prepared so think of a living being in a plastic bag with no air would you want to be in a plastic bag with no air how much life force do you think is left in that just things to consider. I always want you to consider that. 
feel the life force of your food. I've drove my husband absolutely bonkers <laughs> because I'll tell him no, 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 that that doesn't have enough life force. No, I don't, I don't want that. I'm not going to eat that. I'm not going to get it. No, I, I've never done leftovers. How would I know this as a child? You know, and I was like, I'm not doing leftovers. I'm not eating that. It's totally dead. It's been cooked how many times and you're going to warm it up again? Come on, there's no life force. Why would you feed your body something that has no electricity for you, <laughs> right? So we're feeding dead. That's the processed, okay? Processed, overcooked, all right? So anyway, it's true that certain foods, I don't want to get onto that. It's not, okay? It's true that certain foods are more protective than others, especially certain types of veggies. We know this, right? Um, like, you know, the cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, etc. So I found this very, very interesting. Um, Chris, absolutely. Yes. Radio TV signals. That's true. It is. Yes. Yes. That was the radio TV station, um, radio frequencies. Yes, Chris, that is true. All right. Um, Bag salad also has chemicals. Yes, exactly. Preservatives, because they've already cut them open. They've already processed them. Fresh fruit can be processed and overprocessed. <laughs> All right. Um, I found this interesting. In a 2013 study, researchers induced a diabetes-like state in rats by blasting them with Wi-Fi, a 2.45 uh, GHZ gigahertz frequency, equivalent to Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. And if they only did it for an hour every day for three weeks, did you catch that? The fact that the... <clears throat> that you can induce diabetes in rats just by using Wi-Fi signals. What? Wow. Hello. Okay. So now they want to up it. 4G, 5G. Wow. This is why we, we really should do some more protection. And I wanted to share that with you because that was mind blowing of just the fact that just from Wi-Fi alone, a Wi-Fi blast. Whew, crazy. And I know that when they test on animals like this and it's okay, it's a human amount, but I want you to think 5G is not a human amount. It is, it's, it's, oh, mind blowing. All right. So um, disease is a message and we all know that disease is a message to our bodies and we need to listen to it. Don't ignore it. Um, psychic shock. I heard one of the presenters say I liked that term. Psychic shock <gasps> triggers a reaction to happen if we stay in that constant shock. Um we, of course, we can be shocked, but then we can fix it when we, oh, I know what's happening. I need to balance myself quickly. Or we stay in that shock and I don't know what's going on. And we run around in circles trying to figure it all out and just stay in that state. Then disease comes in because we're not in a balanced state. So it's it's all very, um, <clears throat> it's a lot of information, isn't it? But you know what? It's easy ways really to protect ourselves keep to keep doing what you're doing i uh i like the crystals i think are also a really great protection tool i have a lot of now the salt lamps when i was taking them to it will pick you you know the the um incandescent light bulbs put off heat all right so it's going to pick up anything of course the heat register like that um but I have salt lamps everywhere, crystals. I know you do too. Uh, I know I'm talking to a lot of crystal lovers here. They help. They really help. 
and pay attention to where you put crystals. They'll let you know, I don't want to sit here, move me somewhere else. So you're pretty much making a crystal grid within your home to protect you. Um, copper pyramids, you can get them really different sizes. You can get them um, little counter size for your fruit. Um, pyramid power is totally a, another different subject, but um, the, it's great healing. If everyone, if every hospital had a pyramid design, people would heal faster. There's something very healing about a pyramid. Um, ooh, no surprise there, huh? Uh, copper pyramids, they sell them much bigger size, like six feet you can get. Uh, and a lot of healers will use them. They'll put them either over... Um, a healing bed or over a chair or just put it on the floor and they'll sit in the middle of it or lay in the middle of it. And uh, it, so it's, it's, it's really beautiful. One, one healer had, had one outside. She was doing some things outside and she left it overnight and she went outside in the morning and there was wildlife in the center of this copper pyramid, you know, getting their healing on. I was, I was like, I love that. They know, they know where to go. They know the energy, what's good and what's comfortable and makes them feel balanced again. All right. So uh, I just am blown away by all the information that I have learned. And I hope that a lot of this has helped you. Um, there, there are, like I said, uh, devices to protect your, your Wi-Fi router, your smart meter for electric, if you have that. Um, and there's Faraday cloths, um, uh, there's blankets, um, that you can put on. There's that you can, some people, um, say that their sleep got so much better when they found out where their meter or electrical, um, devices came from. Oh, and I want to share something with you too. One man, um, who has been in, um, oh, what was his name? Anyway. He um, had been in electronics all his life. It's a career in electronics. And one day he just had a grand mal seizure. Lasted 45 minutes long. Woke up. He was in an ambulance going to the hospital. Uh, they had to rush him to surgery, brain type of surgery or something. Anyway, he asked the, the specialist afterwards. He's like, I don't understand, I, you know, what happened? He even said, the electromagnetic electro um, contamination or something like that. He had never heard of that. That got him on his, on his journey. He had to retire early, uh, earlier than he wanted to. And he's made this his whole career now. I mean, it's been like uh, 20 years now since he retired and he's been putting all this research 20 years um, talking about infertility can cause infertility. Don't put your cell phone on your body. You see, put them in the pocket, in the front pockets. All right, for guys, guess what? They've been tested. The sperm counts low. All right, can cause infertility in men and women. All right, it can cause female problems for women. Put it in the back. Okay, now we're talking about like colon. We're talking about other types of um, all sorts of things that can happen back there too. Uh, you know, of course, what horrifies me is when I see a woman take her cell phone and stick it right, right in her bra. <gasps> what? That should horrify everyone because now you really, what's going to happen? How often do you do that? You're going to find a lump, you know, I mean, come on. You never know. That's what I'm saying. We've got to be very careful. All right, with these devices, even if you don't feel it, it's working, it's doing something. Um, you know, they say, okay, women are like, we have purses, we can put them in purses. Men are, put them in your jackets. Men, it was, it was by a purse. I started laughing when one, one man suggested that. We need a man purse. <laughs> um, you know, put them in your jacket. I think we should bring back the fanny pack. <laughs> Is that still a style, the fanny pack? <laughs> anyway, but it's still then against you. 
something else too for those that like to go hiking and they have a backpack and they put their um, bottled water and cell phone in the same pack. Do you know that that cell phone can contaminate your water that you're going to be drinking, putting off? So never make sure or, or make sure that your water and cell phone or anything that you consume, I wouldn't put it near a plate of food. I wouldn't put it near a drink, you know, but especially when you're hiking for hours at end or you're, you're someplace and how long does your bottle of water in your cell phone sit in, you know, it can contaminate just saying, you know, even your little granola bars or snacks or anything like that. You want to be very, very careful. But there is so much technology going on with this. And again, uh, Jack Krause, K-R-U-S-E, this is the work he does. This is the holistic practice that he has, that he's, he helps people by going right to the EMF trigger. How about that? That's amazing. Be anything from bad outlets in, in, your, in your room and you can't sleep. Just so many things. All right. So there's, there's Faraday material, uh, Faraday blankets, and Faraday is named after the British uh, um, scientist, English scientist, Michael Faraday, um, who contributed to the study of electromagnet. Uh, magnetism and electrochemistry. His main discoveries include the principles underlying electromagnetic induction, um, diomagnetism, and electrolysis. All right. So he was in the late 1700s in, um, to 1867. So Michael Faraday. So you're going to find the Faraday products, you know, their blankets. There's so many things now, um, again, that more research on. But um, I don't better safe than sorry i mean if you want to walk around in radiation suits i mean seriously we have to consider what are we going to do to protect ourselves our family our home and our pets our pets our pets feel it the animals feel it and we should do this for everyone not just within our home our sacred space but the whole world um, sacred space. And yes, the ascension is happening. And this is our part of, um, let's say the plan, so to speak, but it just helps you to understand when you have something that's unexplained and that's happening, you can probably, why you're feeling the electrical current go through you. Where is it coming from? It's always good to know where what the trigger is for whatever you're feeling or experiencing. We should be asking our bodies these questions. We know our bodies better than anyone else. All right. What's going on? And your body will tell you. And But you have to be calm and not so full of anxiety. Um, so your angels, your guides, hey, my body, what's going on? We have been taught if something's wrong, go right to the doctor. Um, if that's what you want to do, I mean, I personally, I stay away from doctors and hospitals unless it's an emergency, absolutely then go. But I feel a lot of people run to the doctor for any little thing now, and that's not good. All right. Mind, body, and soul do a check. How am I feeling emotionally? The mind, let's check the mind. Oh, is it going nonstop? You know, and then of course, your physical body, what am I consuming that's for my body's optimal health and wellness? All right. And so very, very important uh, information that it was, it's not to scare anyone at all. All right. It's to give you this knowledge to share this knowledge so that um, you can share it with others and also make a stand and what we buy and don't buy. All right. That's the most powerful thing you can do is unfortunately in, in this society that's ruled, seems to be ruled by money with these big companies is refuse to buy the stuff and buy things to counteract or buy things to, you, you know, you see these, these big companies see the success of 
organic and natural and they want in on that. So they're going to buy out, try to buy these natural organic companies or they're, they're, they're going to develop a line. Hey, they want in on this too. I'm sorry, where were you from the beginning? Did you really con con consider our health? Did you take that in consideration or you just want to keep up with the money because you don't want to, oh my gosh, we're losing sales. Breakfast cereal has, has all these chemicals in it and, and no one's buying them anymore. People are getting smarter. Oh no, too bad. It's the same type of thing. No, we don't want this. No, we don't want it. And the people that rush right in, not knowing, you, you know, or maybe they don't care. Uh, so maybe we can help let everyone else know about what's coming up and what they can do. There are solutions always. I don't believe in, in no cure. No, that's not how we are. We're divine beings. You know, <laughs> we absolutely can <laughs> um, just get out of that box, that that thought pattern. And um, we are ascending. We are activating all our strands of our DNA. And that's pretty powerful. That's a very powerful, more powerful than we can ever imagine. All right. Our 12 strands of DNA being fully activated, no longer dormant, the 10 that were dormant, no longer dormant, they're being activated. So we become more powerful as well. And um, that's more of the light. So I told you what you can do and now how you can be is be that light. Push that love and light out in all directions. All right. We've seen this happen so many times. We've seen, you don't have to be right there, hands on, trying to fix something. The power of prayer works. That's that intention. Even if you pray, pray. If you do nothing else, pray. All right, pray for everyone else's highest and greatest, humanity's highest and greatest in this ascension process. For Lady Gaia, for Mother Earth's uh, ascension and the universe, the cosmos is ascending. We're all in this together. All right. So be the light. Be that love and light. And there you go. That's how we become this beautiful, harmonious balance between doing and being. Between the physical and the light. All right. Because it's all energy. It's all very much electrical energy and alive. All right. So whew, I'm going to wrap up the show now. We have, uh, it's been a lot of, I feel hot, <laughs> a lot of energy, of course, coming through a lot of information. And I hope this has helped. Again, if you have any questions, you can message me for friends here on Facebook. You can message me through Facebook. You can message me through my website, whitesagewoman.com. And also, if you want to subscribe and follow me on my blog, whitesagewoman.me, M-E. Now, you can get to the blog from my website as well, okay? And so I just would like to tell everyone, tune in next week. I'm actually going to have a special guest, um, Carol Ann Carey. She's on the Goldilocks Productions Network as well. And she is an incredibly talented medium. She's known as the psychic medium of Sarasota. And her mediumship skills are just amazing to me. So we are going to together give messages. She's going to do more like the mediumship. And of course, you know, I do what I do um, and be what I be. So come and join in next Sunday. Let your family and friends know who want messages next week. Share this show with those that you may feel would benefit from this information from tonight. And uh, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, we'll tune in next week. And good night, Sarah. Thank you. Oh, uh, yes, Teresa and Chris, too. I do believe I must have missed a message here. Um, yes, thank you. There we go. Yeah, everyone have a great week, of course. Oops. And uh, let me 
try to get through. Oh, thank you, Maureen. And uh, another thing too made me think about this. One, um, and one of the scientists, I'm not scientists, one of, one of the presenters always worked night shift and he had a hard time with his knees until he sat in the sunrise light. And that's one of his things is connecting back to nature. So sit in sunlight if you can. Okay. Uh, oh, thank. Hi, Tammy. Hello, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Wendy. Thank you all, everyone. And so, yes, for next week. I know, right? It's going to be a great show. Tune in. Have your questions ready. Have, um, let it, let, and this is when you want a mediumship reading, let your loved one know, hey, I would like to hear from you. I'm going to tune into this show at this time. Can you please be present so that you can come in? So they can come in really strong for um, Carol Ann and it, for myself too. I can sometimes, but not like this is what Carol Ann does. That's her thing. And so she can give you uh, a message from a loved one and I can give you a, a channel message from the angels. All right. Angels and, and, yeah, the light beings, intergalactic council. So <laughs> thank you, each and every one of you for participating and sitting in this sacred circle with me and with each and every one of us. Uh, remember to shine brightly and you do and are making a difference. Many blessings to each and every one of you. Good night. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show. 